I want to welcome our YouTube, YouTube audience and our Vimeo audience. Um, that the topic is grow in the in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. So the topic, the title is to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord. Two separate items. So let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. We're going to have the scriptures up here. We're reading from the New King James Version. Everybody read. Ready? Read. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. So why is it important for us to grow? We have to grow every day in the things of God. We can't be the same that we were, you know, a, a month ago. If we're coming to Bible study, if we're coming to church, we're supposed to be, it's supposed, it should be sticking to us, and it should be making a difference in our lives, the Word of God. So by a show of hands, how many of us can honestly say that the Word of God is making a difference in your lives? Raise your hand. All right, so we see that, all right? So it's making a difference. You say, man, I'm changing. Man, before I would have responded this way before, I would have not known the solution. And I'm, something is happening inside of me that I am changing, and the Word of God is changing me. And you remember when we grew, like, um, uh, as children, as we were growing up, that a lot of times our, our family doesn't see it because we're close to each other. But if somebody, let's say, a cousin comes and they hasn't seen you in eight months, and man, you've grown. Because sometimes when we see each other, we don't really see how we've grown. Uh, on there. But other people say, man, you're grown. You're, you're, you're different than the way you were before. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to grow in the grace and the knowledge of God, of the Lord. Now, this is a Bible study class. So what is grace? Somebody, raise your hand. Ruben. But undivided merit love. Uh, okay, love. Go ahead. What else? That's good. Unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. Unmerited means what? You don't deserve it. Remember, you do not deserve it. But he gives it to us. Wanda? God's power on our lives. Why do we need God's power in our lives? What do we need God's power for? For everything. Forget about it. For everything. We need it for everything. Now, we need God's power to put up with each other. Yes or no? Okay, we need power, God's power in our finances. We need God's power to, to put up with our jobs, we put up situations. You need God's power in every area of our life. Yes, you need it for witnessing, but that's not, that, that answer should be, when somebody says, what do you need God's power for? You say, for everything. Without God, I am nothing, but with God, I am more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. So now, it is extremely important for us to understand this point that we must grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus the Christ. Now, before we get into the grace, I just want to make sure that why, this is Bible study, so now, the minute that we are born, what were we born as from our mother's wombs? Yeah. A sinner. So you understand that every single one, even before you did anything, you were already a sinner. Why? Yeah, but because of Adam's sin, okay? Because of Adam's sin. Not because of Eve's sin, because of Adam's sin. So in heaven, when we go to heaven, where are we going to be living in? According to the scriptures. In mansions, right? So do you want to know where the, the, the house with the most guards, that's going to be Adam's house. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be his mansion. going to have the most bodyguards in front. Because people are going to say, where's that Adam? Because I'm going to kick his butt for all the trouble that I had in earth. And it was because of his sin. And so you want to see where he lives? The one with the most bodyguards, guards. That's going to be his house. So we have to understand that, that the Bible calls Adam the first Adam. And Jesus is called what? The last. the last. Not the second. The last Adam. So when you talk the last Adam, automation, that's Jesus. Okay? So Jesus came to correct what Adam messed up. So before we get into the grace, we have to know this. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. That's all we together. Ready? Read. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world. Who was that one man? Adam. Okay? And death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sin, 13. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. This Bible study, what does that mean? For somebody, raise your hand, please. That sin is not imputed when there is no law. Alexis. Right, 
bike. So I, it, on Kennedy Boulevard, if there would be no speeding sign, you can go 100 miles an hour. And when it says 30 miles is the speed limit, now you know that if you're going 35 miles an hour, that you're breaking the law because it's, you're breaking the speed limit. All right? So before the law came in, it's, and who did the law come in through? Moses. Through Moses. But the Bible starts off talking about who? About Adam. And then who's the next person that, big that they talk in the Bible? Abraham. No, no, before Abraham. Noah. So all the time there was still no law. So all, whatever, they could do whatever they wanted, and they didn't know that they were doing wrong because there was no law. Okay, so that's why it said that sin kept on going, going. But if you don't know, if you don't tell your kids at home, don't touch this, and they touch it and something happens to them, whose fault is it? Parents. Parents, because you didn't tell them, don't do this. Now, how many of us, when um, we tell our kids to do something, and they still do it anyway, they say, I told you not to do that, it, it, it serves you right. Okay, because you already gave them the warning. But if you don't tell them what not to do, you can't blame them when they mess up. Yes or no? Yes. All right, continue. Verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. Who is of him who was to come? Jesus. Jesus. Okay, verse 15. Go. But the free gift is not like the offense, for by the one man's offense, Many die, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. So all of us, automatically, when we accept Jesus, what do we receive? The Holy Spirit, eternal life. Oh, let's stay to the topic. Grace. So automatically, you receive the power of God the ability of God to do whatever it is that you're doing. You have the, the power to be a mom. You have the power to be a husband. You have the power to be a friend, to be a businessman. You're receiving that from God. It's free, and it's a grace. Now, how many of us, Francisco, when he made this, uh, the, um, the, the statement from his testimony, that you think that we have to work for it, for it, and it's because of what you do, instead of realizing it, that it's, it's a gift that's already on us? Yes or no? I can't go forward if we don't understand this. Thank you. Yes. One of the things that I, I, I got, uh, obviously being raised Catholic, right? Uh, there's a lot about sins. There's a lot about you know preaching about sins, sins, sins. Better watch out about this. Better watch out about that. Uh, but in reality, when when like it seems to me that we brainwash. Then you know to such a point that then when we go to the New Testament and we talk about Jesus and where he came from, we have a problem accepting, and that's what I got, accepting the grace or, 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 or the beauty or the love that God is giving us. Because we are kind of like we cannot comprehend it, we cannot get it, because we are blurry and already like kind of brainwashed, as I said before, about sin. And and when we read this, it's kind of we cannot comprehend it. And that's why we have to fight it. You know? When we come to Christ, we have to renew our minds mm -hmm. from the way that we thought to the way that the Bible is teaching us. Elias. Yeah, it's it's just I feel like it over here. what Francis was saying is because we're more sin conscious than grace conscious. And and just as you said, that's why we need to renew our minds. When you brought up Catholic, right? It, it's religion. It's not a personal relationship with Christ. Right, right. So it's, it's all man made. It's all man made. You know, you got to do this, you got to do this work. Right. And this is not, so you can't earn it, and we're going to see that as we continue. Give me verse 16. Go ahead. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift, which came from many offenses, resulted in justification. Verse 17. For by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one. Much more, those who receive. Now, those who receive, will everybody receive this? No. 
And that's why we want to be the ones to receive it. Because of our faulty teaching, because of religion, we don't want to receive it. But here at Hudson Church, we're going to learn how to receive this. Let's continue. Much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. What is reign? Remember we taught about kings and priests. What does reigning mean? Ruling. We're supposed to be ruling, enjoying this life. Now, most Christians that you know, are they ruling and are they enjoying their lives? They're being ruled. They're being they're, they're, they're under condemnation. I'm no good. I missed the mark. And that's the wrong thinking because we're more sin conscious instead of grace conscious. Amen? Amen. So now let's continue. In order to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord, what do we have to do? that a lot of us sometimes don't like or don't think that we should be doing it. It begins with an S. It begins with, second letter is T. I'm going to do like a Wheel of Fortune. S, T. Next letter is U. Study. study. <laughs> we don't want to study. We just want to go to church, sit down, and go back home. We, want, we got to learn how to study. Why? Because the Bible says so. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 15 from the Amplified. We have to understand that we have to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. It doesn't come by praying. We have to study. Lois, go. Ready, go. <laughs> study and be eager and do your utmost to present yourself to God approved, tested by trial, a workman who has no cause to be ashamed correctly analyzing and accurately dividing. What does that mean? Rightly handling and skillfully teaching the Word of God. So now, we have to study. And we got to know that we accept the Lord Jesus through us, a life of studying the, the Scriptures. And if you hear any Christians say, I got it, I know it all, run away from that guy or woman because they're crazy. Uh, they're denied. Every day, every day I go, I know how much literal I know and how much more I have to learn about the scriptures. So we have to understand that. Amen? Amen? So now, let's look at this topic, the man of God and the word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. The man of God. Ready? Read. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, verse 11, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, and Iconium, and at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all, the Lord delivered me. So as Christians, are we going to suffer all those things? Yeah. They're going to come at you, but the Lord's going to do what? Deliver up.